Today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a new stack from HGLRC. Now, this is the HGLRC Forward 435, and you might be like, well, what's the point of this stack? They've released a bunch of stacks. Well, this is going to be the successor to the XJB. So let's take a closer look and get into it. So this is the HGLRC Forward 435. Now this is a successor, again, to the XJB class of stacks for a couple reasons. This has been completely redesigned and it is a 20 by 20 stack here with a VTX F4 microcontroller unit and a 20 by 20 BL Heli 32 ESC. Not only that, it is 6S capable. However, not the 6S you have in mind. For example, a big 6S setup. It's more aimed towards, you know, small micros, something that's going to be rocking an XT30. However, you can possibly get away with putting it on a 5 inch 6S build, but I would strongly advise not doing so. But it could still theoretically handle that, but personally, I wouldn't do that on my own. A couple things that you need to take note of before getting started here. Now, if you take a closer look at the ESC, we see they've gone ahead with edge plating here. This is a very expensive process, and this process means that they're using a proper manufacturer. They're also getting their things done really great. That's a good sign because the older XJB stacks, I remember, or at least the first generation to the second generation, I've had a couple issues where I would rip off the pads while I'm like taking out my battery. Boom, the pads would just come off. However, here, that's not the case, and that's not supposed to happen. So let's get a closer look at the ESC and we'll take a look at everything else. They give you everything you need to basically build a quadcopter that is related to the stack. For example, a proper MMCX2 SMA uh, antenna. Very thick, very nice feeling, which is really great. Something you kind of want to see here. Also a dipolar MMCX in case you wanted to keep your build very light. The cables for the video transmitter, the cable that will connect the ESC to the flight controller, and also an XT30 and even a low ESR capacitor. And it is from a pretty good brand. So have you, I've tested these before, they are pretty great. And I highly recommend you add these low ESRs. Uh, this is a 470, 25 volt. So keep that in mind. If you're running 6S, it uh, should handle just fine, but I would probably go with a 35 volt just in case, because 6S voltage spikes can reach pretty damn high sometimes. So let's come back to the ESC here. Now the ESC again is a Beale Heli 32 rated up to 35 amps. So that's really great out of the box. We also see really nice filtration for a micro build. This is a really great filtration. It's decent, it's above average, so it's really great in that perspective. Also, you can kind of see a little shine on the PCB. It is layered with some conformal coating. That's really great as well. So a little water will not um, basically burn your ESC, but it is still possible. It's not waterproof this way, but it's more like water resistant to an extent. So right now, if you're new and you don't know how to connect this, the way you'd want to set this ESC, and it's very important you set it in this orientation. Some common sense might tell you to set it up like this, but that's absolutely wrong. What you want to do is you want to actually flip it over and install it in your quadcopter like this, because here we have S1, S2, S3, S4. I'm like, what the hell are those? Well, in Betaflight, each motor has a number, and each motor is supposed to be in a specific place. Motor 1 is down here, which is the signal 1. Motor 1, 2, 3. Four. And if you go into beta flight and you see the motors tab, you can actually see if you ever forget motor one, two, three, four, and it'll tell you which way they're even supposed to spin. So that's very useful. Sometimes I forget which way they're supposed to spin and I just go and check that and everything's fine. But the motor orientation, you should really memorize. After a couple of builds, you'll probably end up memorizing it. It's really not that hard. So you just start from the bottom right, one, two, three, four, and you're good to go. So this is how it would be installed right here. This is where your XT60 would go. Now what's really nice is they put two pads on each side. So what you can do, depending on your setup, you can bring in your XT30 and solder it down here. So the black will go to the minus and the red will go to the plus. And on the other side, you can put that capacitor. This way you don't have to uh, fight the capacitor's legs with the wires here. And you can just put one on each side and it's gonna make for an overall clean build and less of a chance of something shorting out. So that's really nice in that perspective. It'll make your life somewhat easier. Next down the line, we have the connector that'll connect our ESC to our flight controller. Now, if you don't know what this does, this does a couple things here. This will give power to the flight controller. So through this, you don't have to figure this stuff out by yourself because the connector does all that for you. So it was really nice to color coded. Not a lot of ESCs do that nowadays. So we can see the power to the flight controller is going through the red and black here. The white ones are gonna be motor one, two, three, and four signal. 
Uh, the green one is possibly current, so it's going to have the current reading to the flight controller here. And as we can tell, there's our shunt resistor that provides the current. And the yellow wire is probably telemetry data, like the RPM of each motor, the temperature. So because it is a Beetle Heli 32, which is really great. And um, or, you know, it, these two could possibly mix. I'm just using theoretical um, names for them right now. I didn't really check the documentation, but it doesn't really matter. Actually, no, I was right. Yeah. So this is the, the green is not the current. The green is going to be telemetry and the yellow is the current here. This is what it's saying. Um, and I could, yeah, that, that's, that's about right. So that's what the wire does here, which is really great. It makes your life super, super easy. So let's remove this and let's take a look at the flight control. The flight control also needs to be plugged in in a specific way or else it'll never fly unless you know what you're doing here. And the way this is supposed to be installed, if you take a look, really close look up in that corner, you see an arrow pointing that way. Whenever you see that, that means the arrow should be up. So it should be like this. And that way means where's your camera? So this is supposed to be installed in your quadcopter like this. And the camera's position would be right here. So that would be the front of the quadcopter. All right, so now we need to figure out where the camera is going to go, where the video transmitter is going to go, and also where the receiver will go, whether it's an IBUS, SBUS, or Spectrum. Where would that connect to? So let's start off with the camera here first. So first, the camera has three wires. It's usually black, which is ground, red, which is 5 volt, and yellow, which is the video line. And that's going to be installed in the front here. So that's really nice. It's going to be very, you could have really short wires coming in for the camera. And what we have here is we would have the five volt here. This is where the red wire would be for your camera, then ground. And then it's going to be the video line, which would be the yellow wire to your camera. So your camera is set and done here. The pads are pretty big, so it's going to be easier to solder than other micros. So that's really great, especially if you're new here. So next thing we're going to cover the receiver. So we're going to cover both IBUS S bus and spectrum. We'll start with S bus, which is FR sky. So the signal wire, your S bus signal, will go here. And that is actually RX1 in the UARTS tab. So keep that in mind. So that's where you'd put the signal. Then we have a 5 volt, which would be the red wire for your receiver. Then we have the ground, which is going to be the black wire. Now, if you're using IBUS, you would still use the 5 volt and ground from here, but you're going to want to go to the RX1 pad right here. And that would give it IBUS spectrum. Uh, kind of the same thing, except your voltage is going to be different. You're going to need to find the 3.3 volts. So the 3.3 volt pad is going to be right here. Then the ground would be here and your spectrum signal would go right here. So you'd use those three for spectrum. So that's it for receivers. Very simple. I like it that it's all in the same area. Next thing we need to cover is the video transmitter. We need the power. We need also the video line and also where a smart audio would be connected by default and possibly already set up in beta flight by default. So in video transmitters, now if you're using the same video transmitter that comes in the box, this takes battery voltage. So it's going to take 7 volts and up. And they have a battery voltage pad right here. So that's where you'd put the red wire for this video transmitter. Next is the ground, which would be the black wire for the video transmitter. And then the third up is going to be our... And the third up is going to be our video line. So this is going to be the yellow wire going to the video transmitter. However, usually on some micros, let's just say you're using a different video transmitter and it takes five volts. You will need to find a five volt pad instead of the battery pad right here for the red wire. But the ground and the video will be installed in the same exact place. And I think there's a five volt right here, if I remember correctly, or it's just so hard to read. So I think this is a five volt right there. You could use and just double check that for you. Yeah. So if you had a five volt VTX, you would connect the five volt right here, give it the ground and put the video right there and you'll be set to go. Now, if you're going to be using smart audio, smart audio would be going on a T pad. So we'll be using TX here. This is what it is by default. So in beta flight, it'll be enabled by default on smart audio on UART2. Smart audio always connects to a T pad. Keep that in mind. So that's where you'd set that up. Also, this has compatibility. I think the TX one here is inverted for S port. So keep that in mind. If you try to put smart audio here, it might not work. And if it doesn't work, it's because it's inverted. So uh, that might save you a headache with this information that I just gave you here. Now let's take a closer look at the board because it's packing quite a lot here um, for being such a tiny board. So it's using an F405. So it's an F4 microcontroller unit. We have a barometer. We have flash memory, which is really great for black box logging if you have some issues, especially on some of the micros. And if we flip over, we see we're using just normal capacitors for the OSD, which is okay for a small quad. We see a TVS diode, which is really great, uh, and suppressing high voltage. Uh, that's really nice uh, that they've done that. This also has a 5 volt 3 amp regulator. That's pretty good because uh, some video transmitters that run on 5 volts do soak up a lot of power, and they have that in mind in this build, which is also something really nice. So it's a very well thought through 20 by 20 stack. 
even though we're flooded with them all over the market here. Uh, here's the, their video transmitter, really nice, no shielding. I haven't tested it, but hopefully it's going to perform pretty good. If anybody's used any of these, let us know down in the comment section. We see we have a microphone on board using MMCX, which is really great. We also have connector and the option to direct solder here, which is really great. Also, and it has a 5 volt, 1 amp voltage regulator on board. If, if you needed 4 amps, uh, on 5 volts then you could you know use both of them you could utilize both of them here so that's something really nice to have as well um, other than that this stack looks pretty good let me know what you guys think down in the comment section um, I really hope this video helps someone that's the whole idea here and come join my patreon I have one of these stacks up for a giveaway with some other premium stuff so your chances of winning are really high because new patreons get a separate giveaway every month so whoever's joined my patreon is like two people uh this month i think or three uh those three will have a chance to win to uh, something pretty crazy so come join my patreon come support this channel everything here is linked down below and i'll see you in the next one guys peace out